Welcome back to The Thread. Today, we're going to be talking about vision. Never follow a trend. Always be the trend. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, obviously we're talking about vision. How do you know what's coming next? How do you know what's a part of your vision? How do you like go after it? You know what's coming next based on what you set out to do as far as your goals. For athletes, kind of plan the game out in your mind yeah. so that when you get to the game, you've been there hundreds and thousands of times, right? If there's this saying, it's um, constant repetition creates conviction. Yeah. Right, so I like to visualize success, but I've also think about the plays that I may not do so well on. Or if I do fail, I'm not being paralyzed to it. And I think that's a great analogy sure. to kind of like how you live your life. It's definitely good to like have the past to reflect on. Yeah. But living in that moment, you know what I mean? Like, especially like in style, like that seeing what's next, it's, it's hard to, to really predict that. You, I just try to create it. So I live in the moment, I do me. Um, and as long as I'm doing me and I'm staying true to me, I feel like that's what's next. You know what I mean? I'm what's next, so. Say that part again. I'm what's oh, next. <laughs> I love that. It's like the dopest little sly comments that come out of Alan. Like, talk about what's next. Let's talk about next on my list to talk about is your best. I love it. <laughs> no, no. If you look, think about vision, you know, this vest is futuristic. I've, all, sure. I've always sure. thought at the next level, what's the next level? And, and one thing that I've kind of learned with vision is that, you know, <laughs> you got to have your own vision. Your yeah. vision can't be someone else's. One of the most visionary women I've had the pleasure of meeting, Karen Sibyl's actually going to come and right, bless the studio. Big boss. Then the homie, the one and only, Reggie Bush, is going to stop in. I cannot be happier to have you, Karen Civil, on the couch of the thread. I've been really impressed just watching your journey. Like, what is that day-to-day? -day? I'm, I'm always curious, <laughs> yeah. like, what is the day-to-day -day for someone managing a hip-hop artist? Um, right? I'm very open. Yeah. Yeah. I take people as they are. Yeah. Like, I've worked with people from a Hillary Clinton to, you know, a Nipsey Hussle YG. Yeah. So I don't care about people's background and things like that if they're very educated and I feel like they have a story. Yeah. So let me help amplify it and take it to the next level. But every day is a different thing. Sometimes it's like great days, other days. Sometimes it's, it's risk management. Yeah, other <laughs> days it's like, oh my God, I'm falling apart. But today has been a good day so far. You've also, yeah, you have a book coming. Yeah, right. I'm like really excited. Um, really about this one, because I'm going all the way and doing like a, a promo run and everything. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What was that moment in your career where you were like, you know what, I'm, I'm out here. Speaking at the White House, so they had 25 women who are doing comparable things in their community and in their neighborhoods. So they had me come speak for that. And it was with Michelle Obama, and that wow. was so cool. And I was excited just to be there. They had me walking around in her like her office. I definitely left my book in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like meeting them, and from there, that really helped me in that political space. You've seen the climate now. How, what would you give advice to other women who are looking to come up and make a name for themselves? I'm reaching out to new people, building relationships. I'd go to events that I naturally probably wouldn't go to, um, and started making relationships. And I started thinking outside the box. And one once I got into that space, the clients and people that I had relationships with, I was figuring out ways to integrate them too. So people would stop thinking like, um, how did, why is she here? Mm -hmm. I belong here. Yeah. Facts. And when you walk into these rooms, these boardrooms and certain things, I used to have these conversations with women at Beats is they sit at the end of the table or, you know, we shrink ourselves thinking that's what's needed or we should do to fit in. I'm not trying to fit in. Mm. So just understand if you're a light and you shine, never try to dim it. Never. Yeah. And that, yeah. Is there like anything that, you know, the men out there can do, whether it's being aligning with or supporting uh, equality for women? I think it's like the biggest thing is just support. You know, not being fearful 
tucking the ego yeah. mm -hmm. and not saying, you know, I don't want a woman on my team or thinking she's lesser than, just realizing we're equal, yeah. we're just as talented and just fully supporting us. Just when the opportunity comes, speaking up if you see injustices and certain things like that. And that's really the most important part. I'm a man, I definitely look myself in the mirror a lot. You know what I mean? Oh, we know. And, and real. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> More to reevaluate and look within. Oh, okay. But um, I, I do believe that at the same time, the women need to give us some slack. Like, we try. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. Slack how? Like we try, like we try. I think I think we're we're making more efforts to, mm -hmm. to do better. I'm not a, about to applaud you for trying. Like no, that, you're you're doing like what that. you're supposed to do just as a human being and understanding like the climate and certain things we're in. Because you at the end of the day are like everybody here, you're yeah. you're all men of color. Mm -hmm. You understand like certain odds and things against you. Now, so why would you not help another person you see to your left or your right who may be going through that? And for women, it's much more worse. Mm -hmm. I actually have one question before we leave. Mm -hmm. If you could tell anything to young women, young girls across the world, one major key to elevation, what would it be? Um, in a world that wants you to be everything but yourself, continue to be yourself. Um, and that's the most important thing, it's just being authentic. Yeah to self, not not letting the, the noise, the outside noise of society drown out, like your vision, your potential, your ideas, and your love. There's very few times on this couch where I feel as though I'm inspired to go and do much more than what I'm already trying to do. Um, I mentioned that we wanted to create an experience for you, but you have most certainly created an experience for us, so thank you today. The importance of nail care started when I was about 10 years old. My mom would go get her manicure and her pedicure. And I was just always so curious about it. I remember the first thing my mom saying to me is, women don't like dirty nails. <laughs> you know, whenever I see somebody that's like, that I don't even know well, but has dirty nails, like I'll ask them like, hey, you ever got a manicure? And the answer is normally no. So uh, I feel like that's part of my purpose <laughs> on this earth is to make sure like, Guys go out there and really take care of themselves. Just like putting on a new pair of shoes or a dope jacket that you just bought. You know, when I get a manicure, you know, it makes me feel good, makes me feel clean. It's almost like a like the finishing touches when you get dressed. It like seals the outfit. Contrary to popular belief, it's not just feminine. It's very masculine to be able to go in there and get your uh, manicure and pedicure. <laughs> you get points for going in there and being able to sit there and talk to 10 different women sitting around you. So that, that's another reason why, why I keep going too. So it's, it's been a good experience. <laughs>We got the homie, the one and only, mm -hmm. Reggie Bush in the house. We've seen you go through different stages yeah. of your life. You know what I mean? You've been on a public platform mm -hmm. for a long time now. Mm -hmm. I know you've always been conscious of your style. Yeah. Uh, Charlene Roxborough, one mm -hmm. of the stylist greats. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you see like the NBA and the, the, the highlighting of, of style mm -hmm. and, and importance of it. Do you feel like young guys should really focus in on that attribute, keeping in mind the fact that it's not always going to be lights, camera, action. It, their, their career will go to a different level. I think it is important. You know, for me, I always wanted to dress nice because I think that making an impression on people, sure. part of that is, you know, when somebody sees you from across the room, the first thing they're going to look at is what you're That's wearing, right. how you look, and then they're going to make a judgment based, based off on of that, look, yeah. right? Charlene helped me a lot right. because before she got to me, I was wearing the big, White t-shirts. White t-shirts. With the with the sweats. With the, with the <laughs> fresh the white, uh, what was, what was the shoes the, back the, uh, the, the Air Force Ones? The Air Force Ones. Those are classic. Those are classic. Because like the way, uh, the way you're bred, the way you come out of college, the way you're yeah. like coached, like this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I think that it can be built into where it does become, just yeah. like any habit, a part of your DNA yeah. and part yeah. of your bandwidth. Yeah. But that's a new narrative. Yeah. So you are exposed to that. We all are exposed to that. So we're like, oh, we've seen both sides of it. Like, you can do that and still yeah. be successful. But the old adage is like, no, you're a football player, you're a basketball player, that's it. And they're not going to yeah. teach you that. They're not going exactly. to give you that information. Yeah. And you know I, what I mean? I think where the narrative gets lost for, for 
this generation of athletes. And I mean like the young guys now, you know, going into the league, whatever it's football, basketball, whatever, a lot of guys focus on the brand first. Mm. And they just, they're not putting 110% effort yep. Yep. into this. Like, yep. this is the thing that's got you here, yep. right? Keep the main like, thing. You gotta, you gotta drive yeah. this first yeah. to get everything else around it. Yeah. All that will come, in my opinion, yeah. I think. 100%. Yeah. First of all, Reggie is probably the best college player that I've ever seen in person in my life. Wow. First, first of all, let's okay, just say that. Go. And no, 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 seriously. Facts, no, facts. And I'm at UCLA. I got recruited by USC. And the only thing that made me think about going was because he was there. At the time, Herschel Dennis was there. Mm -hmm. But whenever we would see each other, it was always love. Mm -hmm. Right? He should have went to USC, by the way. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, right hey, right hey, hey, listen, I already you know, know that was coming. He should have came to USC. That's why they sent you over here. That's now, a different Y'all can't get the same question. It would have been sacrilegious. <laughs> what can you tell to the younger athletes on how you can leverage what you've done at yeah. the professional level and the collegiate level to kind of Man. get you in those doors that you might not be able to get into? I think you just said it, leveraging. Yeah. I think it's so important for, for athletes to know, and then not just athletes, anybody who's trying to develop a brand, yeah. develop their own brand, Sure. you got to have something to leverage. Yeah. I learned it, I was blessed enough, fortunate enough to learn it at a very, you know, when I was in college. Yeah. So obviously now you're in a different role. Mm -hmm. What is one of the things that has transitioned from being an athlete into your grind as a sports yeah. analyst? Mm -hmm. You know, even though I'm not on the football field anymore, I'm still competitive in a sense where I want to be great. Because, um, you know, that's, that's the way I was raised. I was raised by my mom and my stepdad. Mm -hmm. And me and my real dad had a up and down relationship. And so for me, as I thought through it, um, that my whole drive and my whole passion in life uh, was really to, you know, make my dad proud of me. Wow, and, uh, and also to, you know, in a sense, make him jealous as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's good and bad to that, sure. right? Because uh, on one side, it's coming from a place of negativity. And you never want your drive to come from this place, like a place of, of negativity like, yeah. because in the end, at some point in time, you gotta face those yeah, fears, exactly. you know what I mean? You gotta yeah. face those things that have maybe held you back, you know, whatever point it was in your life. And so for me, um, you know, that was really my whole drive. You know, that was obviously the wrong way to go because in the end of the day, I needed to make it right with my dad, with my pops, you know what I mean? And I needed to develop that yeah. strong relationship. Everybody deserves that right. kind of like, you know, Ali or whatever, but the ones who do deserve it, you have been like, here, I'm gonna provide the tools. Let's see where you take it. Yeah. Um, and that's the standard. Continue to be you, man. Yeah, I'm excited it. for where you're headed. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a joy to, to not only see the reinvention, mm -hmm. but to experience the yeah. reinvention. And uh, yeah. and, and you now you're not you're not just practice. a bro. You're not just a, a friend. You're a part of the thread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, have, you gotta, have, you gotta, have, you gotta come back. Uh, you gotta come back for it. <laughs>